Greetings, my name is Kerry and welcome back to my channel. So today I have a book tag for you. This is not a tag that I was actually tagged to do but I saw it on Justin's channel, Triumph for Reads, and I really liked the question so I thought I'd just give it a go anyway. So I'll link his video down below so you can see that and the tag was originally created by Books and Pieces so I'll link her original video down in the description box as well so you can go and check that out. So this is the old books tag, I don't think I mentioned that already, so this is the old books tag. I love old books. So books are my biggest weakness as you can probably tell from the shelves behind me and as a sub-genre of books my biggest weakness when it comes to books are old books. I really love old books. So when I saw this tag I was like yeah this is right up my street. I'm just gonna go through the questions. So the first question is have you ever bought a book that was made before you were born as in the physical physical book not the text? The short answer is yes many a time. I'm gonna insert a little picture here because you can't see it. It's a shelf that I'm staring at that my camera is sat on is where I keep the majority of my old books. So I'm gonna stick a picture in here so you can see some of the ones that I own. So I think all the ones on that shelf are gonna be ones that were printed before I was born. So it's a great weakness of mine. A lot of these are from the early 20th century or late 19th century. There are a few on the bookshelves behind me as well because of space requirements but not many, the majority of them now, and then the more fragile ones as well are on, on the shelf that I'm looking at that you can't see, so that's why I'm putting a picture in here for you to see it. So yeah, I have a great many, and I always try and sniff them out if I can. None of them have cost me very much money either, which is the other thing, they're generally bargains. I try and find them in charity shops. So for example, one, let's get it off here, this one, The Heart of Midlothian by Sir Walter Scott, cost me 50p, and it was published this edition was published, I would say, around 1900. It's got someone written 1909 in that, the pre a previous owner. So I generally pay not very much money for them when I can. It's, yeah, I like old but not expensive books because I feel like I'm rescuing them then and giving them a new lease of life. Oh, maybe something, I don't know. So anyway, yes, I have many a book that was made before I was born. Question two is which book on your shelves takes place in the oldest time period so I had a little bit a think about this and the one I've come up with is Love Amid the Ashes by Matthew Andrews so this is set at the very beginning of Old Testament times it's based on a couple of stories from the Bible so the main characters are Job who in the Old Testament was tested by the devil. He was a wealthy man, he had a lot of children and then suddenly he loses everything in a series of crazy coincidences and it's because the devil is testing him to see if he'll curse God or not. And then the other character, other central character is Dinah who is the daughter of Jacob. So she's the sister of Joseph. If you've seen Joseph and his amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat, if you're familiar with that story, Dinah is the little mentioned sister of Joseph, great granddaughter of Abraham. If you have any familiarity with biblical history, you might know who those people are. The book of Job in the Bible is sort of classed as a poetry or wisdom literature book and not as necessarily a historical book. But a lot of people generally think that the book of Job, if it's a true story, which is generally accepted that it while it's sort of poetic literature that it may be based on actual actual events. So if you accept that the history books of the Old Testament are factual to an extent then you you can also accept that the book of Job is factual. I'm giving way too much <laughs> detail here probably that you, it may be a bit boring to you but I find this stuff fascinating so sorry. So most people think that the historical story of Job, the character, if he re really existed would have been around at the same time as Jacob and his family. And the author Matthew Andrews found evidence to suggest that when Job was restored to health and to wealth he remarried and she found evidence to suggest that he married Dinah. So this is a novelization of how that might have come about because that's not actually in the biblical text. Their two stories don't intertwine. In fact, Dinah is barely a footnote. She has quite a sad story and then she largely disappears from the text whereas there's a lot of attention on her brothers and that is just the way it happened in the Old Testament books. The women get forgotten. But anyway, so this is a really lovely book. This is a really powerful book. I've read it a couple of times and just really gets me emotionally every time. The sort of bad guy character in it is a little bit caricatured but I'll make allowances for that because I just find it really moving. Novelization of 
a couple of biblical stories that mean a lot to me because the book of Job is one of my favourites in the Bible. I find it really, it's a really comforting read. So this is Love Amid the Ashes by Mezu Andrews. I've talked for a really long time about that one book. Okay, um, question three. Have you got a book that was originally published in the same year that we, you were born? So if you saw my over 30 book tag recently, you'll have seen me talk about this book. It'll be linked in the description so you can go and check that out if you haven't already. So this book was published the year I was born. This is Dirk Gently's Holistic Detective Agency by Douglas Adams. He's more well known for writing the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy series. This was another series that he started but didn't complete at the time of his death. This is the first book. So there's another book called The Long Dark Tea Time of the Soul, which is also in this series. Derek Gently is a private detective who sees the interconnectedness of all things. So completely unrelated events seem related to him. I remember it being sort of a bit weird. I mean, it's along similar lines to Hitchhiker's Guide. So it's a really long time since I've read it. So I don't really remember that much of the story, apart from that some weird stuff happens. Yeah. But I quite enjoyed it. I haven't read the second one, so that's on my TBR to read soon. I might have to reread this one to it so I can remember what goes on. I think it's been made into a TV series as well. It might be on Netflix. A couple of, a couple of, I know BBC made a mini series. I think Stephen Mangan was in it. But I think someone else has made a series that's on Netflix as well. I can't remember. Anyway, worth checking out. Question four is, which book on your shelves have you had for the longest? I wasn't sure about this one. And then I remembered that I have this particular book. This is called Good News from Jesus. This was one of my favourite books as a child. This was actually given to me at the time of my dedication. You can see the inscription there. So the type of church that I was raised in doesn't christen children. They dedicate them instead. It's a slightly different kind of ceremony that just says, we thank you for this child. At the occasion of my dedication, some family friends gave me and my family this book. It's just sort of sim simplified, simplified retellings of some of the stories from the Gospels. So some of them are events, so this is the man in the tree is the story of Jesus meeting Zacchaeus. Some of them are parables, so the son who came back is the famous story of the prodigal son, with these really lovely illustrations that I just find so adorable. I remember being read this book when I was little, I remember one of the stories actually really frightening me. I think it was this picture, this is Evil Beazle who plants thorns in his neighbour's wheat field and those those thorns are quite scary looking anyway so this was my one of my favourite books as a child and I'm really glad to to still have it because it, it's sort of treasured memories so that's that one question five is which book have you had the longest but never read this one I again found quite difficult because I don't actually know how long I've had a lot of the books I own but then I remembered that I don't have them all with me but in I still have a few boxes of books in my parents attic and a lot of them are Enid Blyton books and last year when we were going through some of them I did pull out a couple to to reread or read for the first time so I know that I didn't read all of them when I was a kid but I can't remember necessarily which ones I did or didn't read for example I've got here second form at Mallory Towers still got the price label on it so I've had this since I was a kid I don't think I ever read this one because I didn't have the first one but I do now and I have read the first one I think one of the ones I've had for the longest is the fifth one in the series called In the Fifth at Mallory Towers but I think I read that one but I can't remember but I don't think I ever read this one second form and I've got a load of other Enid Blyton books like Secret Seven, Famous Five, Adventure ones, Five Find Outers, Mallory Towers, St Clair's. I basically I had a lot of her books and I didn't read most of them before I grew out of them. I like to re occasionally reread some books that I loved as a child or didn't necessarily get round to so I'm trying I might try and finish this series this year but yeah so that's basically any book by Enid Blyton that I own but I haven't read but that's some of the ones that I've had the longest. And question six is what's the oldest book you own? So this one took a bit of finding out because you'll have seen from the picture that I put up at the beginning I have quite a lot of old books and part of the issue with older books is that they don't always have the year of publication written in them it was just wasn't something that was a standard part of the industry for a very long time. So I went through all of them and tried to find any identifying features of when they were written or published and some of them didn't have dates of publication but they did have inscriptions that helped give me a guide to dating them and then I realised that I have a couple of books that are bound differently. So for example I have a lot of books sort of from the late 19th early 20th century that are cloth bound like this. This is The Small House at Allington by Anthony Trollope. So there was an era where cloth binding was sort of the 
the most common form of binding on books. And then I realised that I have a few books that are bound in a slightly different way, which implies that they're slightly older. So I had a look through them and I found this one. This is called Théâtre d'Education. It's a French book. I'm not entirely sure what it's about. It's something to, something to do with the history of theatre. So, I mean, it's got an inscription of 1870 there of an owner, but actually on the next page, so you see here, it says 1797. So, and because of the binding as well, it's this hard cover with sort of a leather binding on the edge and this lovely marbling. I don't know how well you can see that because of the light, but it's lovely marbling along the spine. <laughs> the equivalent of modern sprayed edges. This was one my aunt gave me. She gave me a box that, well, she told me that they were all, um, oh, I think it's plays, actually. She told me that they were all uh, poetry books, and most of them were. They were Robert Burns books, but they're plays. They're French plays. I'm really excited now. I'm going to have to try and read this soon. I'm trying to be very careful with it because it's very old, but yeah, so this is... 1797. Lovely little book of French plays. I think it was my nan's before it was my aunt's. I think that's where it came from because my nan spoke French as well. Anyway, I don't remember but I really love that little book and I love all old books. So we're nearly there. Question seven. Which book do you have that was written the longest time ago? I'm not entirely sure exactly when it was written but I have The Odyssey by Homer. So, just a brief read of the introduction has shown me that no one is entirely sure exactly when Homer lived or wrote this book, but it was probably around a thousand years BCE. The story in its written form is possibly around 3,000 years old. No one is entirely sure, and it was, I think, based on an oral tradition of myths and legends prior to Homer writing it. I don't know, I haven't actually read this yet. I'm sure when I read the introduction properly and actually read the book, I'll find out for sure. I also have the Iliad up on the shelf there as well. I can never remember which one is meant to be the first one. I will read them at some point, but yeah, I, I think these are these are really lovely editions of them as well. <laughs> I showed my friend who was a classics graduate these and she was really jealous. So yay. So anyway, that is the oldest texts that I own. It's amazing, isn't it? I think this was part of I can't remember her name. The original creator's point is that it's amazing how books survive, how stories survive, and that that's part of the reason why I love collecting old books is because they contain so much history, not just of like the record of what has happened, like the novels or like the written written record of the author's work, but actually like they just the inscriptions, like how many people have owned this book. Oh, how many people have owned this book? Description 1909. I've got a couple that were... This one I bought in New Zealand when we were visiting there a long time ago and was a prize in a school award ceremony. I think in 1919. It just says Christmas 19. So we think that was 1919. So I just love the history that is contained within old books. This is Shirley by Charlotte Bronte, by the way, which I have read and really enjoyed. So... Thanks for coming with me on this slightly nostalgic journey. <laughs> I'd love to hear from you. If you've done this tag, I'd love to see your answers. Um, if you haven't done this tag and you want to tell me in the comments what some of your oldest books are that you own, or like if the, the book itself is old or if the text is old, um, I'd love to hear about some old books that you love. Do you have a weakness for them as well? It'd be good to know that I'm not the only one. Yeah, so have a chat to me down in the comments. Uh, please like this video if you liked it and subscribe if you haven't already. And you can follow me on social media as well. All that information will always be in the description. I upload videos a couple of times a week, so I'd love to have you along for the ride. And thank you so much for watching today and I will talk to you again soon.